What's up, guys? Um, gonna go live today, and I want to talk about LandVision, which is a program we use to pull data. It's our, our data aggregator. Um, we use DataTree, but now we're actually switching over to do LandVision. Uh, it's a different kind of program. It's a little bit more of like a builder suite. You could do there's tons of zoning levels, all that stuff. Like I don't know actually fully how to use it yet, but I'm learning, and I figured might as well go live and learn with me. Um, I just definitely want you guys to check this out. If you guys are interested in learning and how we do this stuff, I will drop this right here. So I'm going to put together a quick, like, 30-minute video just talking about, you know, the five steps. It's a five steps to making a six-figure business. Um, 30 minutes, check it out. It's really going to help you, like, kind of, like, get your mind right and think about where you want to be and how to do all this stuff. So I'll leave that running on the bottom so you guys can see it. So what we're going to do today... We're actually gonna um, actually. I gotta add somebody in here. Maybe. I'm gonna bring somebody in. Give me a second. Do, 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 do. Where is he? Just gonna have more come in here. So yeah, okay, cool. So we got some showing up. So we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about. I want to show you guys this. This is Land Vision. That is Discord. Definitely join the Discord. Um, so this is Land Vision. It's basically what we're using now to aggregate data. It's very similar to Data Tree. I'll show you that too, so you guys can see the difference. They're very similar. The difference is is you're paying for a license up front for. Um, um, for land vision, it's a you're paying pretty sizable upfront for one year's worth of stuff. So if you have a lot of data you're pulling and all that stuff, it's totally worth it. Now, data tree is a little bit different. Data tree is you're paying per per um, property you're pulling. Uh, I will say that I do think the data on data tree could be a little bit fresher. Um, I've noticed some of the stuff on on land vision could could be a little slower. But uh, I've, I've, uh, I definitely think they're both really good. Um, let me see what we got. So here we are. So this is LandVision. What we could do is we could pull all our data. What I like about LandVision is I could basically pull unlimited data. I don't have to worry about it. So that's the nice part about all this stuff, um, which is pretty sweet. So I really have full control. I could pull as much data as I want. I can make mistakes. Doesn't cost me anything. Uh, we actually worked out a big thing with Leah that we got um, a couple people licenses. There's about 40 of us in total that got a license. All right, so what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna quick just show you. Let's do this. Let's look at. Uh, I'll pick a random county. Let's pull Union County. Carolina. So I'll search that to pull up the county itself. You can zoom out. You can zoom in. Now, if you look here, you can see what's cool about Land Vision is it shows you all these like points of interest and all the crazy stuff that's going on. So as you like, here's Burger Kings, Family Dollars. You could turn on different layers. I might actually have to open this in. Yep, there we go. So I could add different layers. I could do zoning, coverage maps. I could do, I could add way more layers as well. I could do the traffic maps. I could do demos. I could do builder sites. So if I'm looking, let's say I'm doing um, infill lots, I could see what builders are working in the area. So you can see Eastwood Homes is working here. Meritage Homes is working here. Kind of gives you an idea. So it works with the top 200 builders in the country. 
and you kind of just see where the builders are building, right? So if you're targeting infill lots, you're targeting um, entitlements, subdivisions, things like that, you're going to probably want to focus on these types of properties, like properties in these types of areas that have a lot of builder activity. Look at this. It's going crazy, this whole area. This is Charlotte, so it's pretty nuts. Um, so you could see all their builder sites, what they're doing. You could click on them. You go through them. You could see builder site, Spring Meadow. You could take a look at what they're building, flex homes, farmhouse style homes, single family lots, da, 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 all that stuff. So you get an idea of what exactly is going on. And then also it tells you basically like if I'm going to be doing, you know, I'm going to try to pull land out here. Like let's say I want to pull some land right around here. I know that I could probably reach out to Centex, Home, M Helms, and all these other brands and then probably broker a deal once I get, you know, paper lots going. So I haven't done that stuff yet. But if you are one who is doing um, entitlements and stuff like that, Land Vision is definitely the way to go. So Mark was going to come in. I don't know where he's at. We're going to pull a list for him. Let me see if he's here. Where is Mark? Cool. That's all right. I'm not sure where Mark is at right now. Mark, when you get here, just drop a comment. Um, so what we're going to look at is I want to try to find a good area, something that is trading pretty well. So I'm going to go in here. This is Tableau. This is um, Leah's monthly market analysis tool. It's definitely helpful. I mean, it really kind of like helps us hone into exactly what we want to see. Um, pulls all the freshest data. So this is like August, for instance, and then this will get updated for September and really helps us kind of like pick our markets. It, a process that usually takes us hours and hours and hours. Like this is a sheet that I build and this takes, you know, my VA a lot of time um, to do this stuff. So it's a pain in the butt. But this is all done for us. So it's way simpler. So I'm just going to look at a couple counties. Let's look at some sell through rates in the three month. I want to see properties available. I want to see more than 40. Uh, let's see more than 20 available. I want to see more than 20 sold in the last six months. Take this out. So we got a bunch of good markets. You can see the sell through rates on the 10 to 20s, 28%, 21%, 38%, 20%. Pretty damn good. Michigan's going crazy right now. You have seven pending, seven sold, 12 on market. John, you're down for market? <laughs> Let's go, John. What do you want? Pick a, pick a uh, give me a state. These are some of the hottest ones in the area for the 10 to 20 acres. So we'll take a look at them and then we'll look, we'll compare that for like a five to 10 and all that stuff. So we got, let me go back here. Let's do Michigan. Now, the one thing I will say with Michigan and stuff like that, if you're going to do Michigan, the downside to doing Michigan now, it's we're getting pretty close to, um, uh, it's getting pretty close to like winter. So you got to be careful with that kind of stuff. Um, just because it's hard to sell a property that's covered in snow. <laughs> Let's see, I just got to delete something. Hold on. So, all right, cool. Let's see. Uh, Mark, there you are. Okay. Gotcha. Um, I'll pull, I'll pull a county for each of you guys. So John, give me, give me an area. You tell me these are, you can see the, you can see the thing. Well, we're going to go dig into it. So you got New York, North Carolina, New Hampshire, Missouri, Michigan. These are all like 
really good sell through rates. They have some some stuff. We're gonna actually take a look at this deeper, but the in the three month sell through rate is one of the ones I really look for. That means it's got long standing activity. Um, they're pretty good, above fifty percent. So like Florida, okay, Florida. We got Levy County and Gershersh County. Let's go Redfin. this baby over cool perfect so let's see what we got as far as solds in one year that's weird my red fin is backwards today wonder why that is so we're gonna go land i'm gonna look at so right now on Tableau, we're showing the, this was Florida, Gershon. This is the 10 to 20 acres. So I'm going to look at a little bit further. I'm going to look at the five and tens. I want to just see what's going on here. Okay, so this is actually pretty good. So if you look at here, let's look at this. So we're in the panhandle. Actually, we just got a property under contract last week, like right here. Uh, it's a buy for 70, sell for 145. Um, that's okay. We'll get both of you. Don't worry about it, John. Um, let's see the for sales. I just want to see what activity is going on. Anything above five acres, no max. So there's not a lot on market. I mean, there's 34. It's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Sorry. I went to set active for sale under contract. So you got eight pending, which is awesome. That's it's freaking stellar. So if you look at all the pending ones, ignore that. This is a five acre. This is a seven acre. This is a 10 acre. This is a five acre, 10 acres, 30 acres. This is a subdivide somebody's doing and it's pending. That's pretty cool. Um, five acres. So you got some activity in the five to 10 acre range right now, which is really good to see. Let's check the one year. Cool. One year. 115. So I like to see more than 50 in the one year sold because I want to make sure I have enough data basically. So that's really important. Now we got what I want to do now is I'm going to check for homogeneous pricing. So let's do 10 to 5 to 10s. And I'm going to click around. I just want to see okay, this side of the county, what stuff is trading for versus the other side of the county. So we got a 50, it's off market. Let's check this guy. So you got a 65,000 65, for a five acre. Let's go over here. 60,000 for a five acre. See, like this is like textbook homogenous pricing. Okay. This makes your life so much freaking easier when you're trying to price the county out. You see a couple high ones right here. There might be like a subdivision or something like that. But for the most part, the majority of these properties are all falling in this 50 to 100K range. So it's about $10,000 an acre, right? Pretty close to it. Not exactly perfect, but pretty close. You're never going to find a perfect county. But it gets you kind of close. So that's good. I like to see that. Let's check the 10 to 20s and see what they're trading at. 37 of them. So yeah, 113 for a 20. Okay, no good. Market. So this is 100 for a 10. It's 10K an acre. Um, 10 acre for 80, so it's 9k an acre. 106, 10 acres, so they're about 10k an acre. Pretty close, pretty close. Okay, now I want to check one more range. So, this market, the five to tens are selling um, way faster than the or selling better than the uh, than the 10 to 20s, and even the 20 to 40s. There's still 15 sold in the last year, but not might not be worth mailing, you know, that many of these, depending on how many parcels there are available. We'll also look at this. Let's see, go look at this. 
not the subdivision. I want to see how many days on market these were. Okay, so this sold in three months. Not bad. 25 acres. Uh, I would so I would mail anything from five to thirty acres probably here. Just just looking at like what's kind of moving. And it depends on your budget and all that stuff too. So this is May to June. Wow, holy crap. That's sold in less than a month. Damn. Okay. I like this county. I might I might keep this for May. Just get it. <laughs> Seems like a really good one. Um June 12th to July. Wow, stuff is moving fast here. Okay, so everything indicates this is a good county. So what I'm going to do here, this is data tree. I'm going to use land vision. So let's zoom out. Okay. So here is county, Gershaw County, Florida. Let's search area. So I'm going to include that into my search area. Property type, I'm going to do, I just want to do vacant land, agricultural. Ag land is basically just vacant land. Sometimes you could, people sub the bottom, people rezone them, do entitlements. So, and since we don't really have to worry about stuff here, I just pull it. Deselect all. So characteristics, I want to see lot size, 4.9. And I'm going to pull all the data. That doesn't mean you have to mail all the data. The reason why I'm doing that is I can with Land Vision. It doesn't cost me extra. Um, I like to do, what I like to do is this. And this is everybody's you know, personal preference. I like to do non-owner, not occupied. Uh, probably okay. We'll have to run the numbers, but I would say no owner occupied. And then I'm just going to, Apply filter. I want to see what loads up. Now, sometimes it doesn't show up. It did good right now, but sometimes it doesn't show up right away. So it's showing me 2,000, 2,820 properties listed that are vacant. Now, what you could do next, if you have land vision or you have the time, you could sit here. You could take a look at these properties. You click this. You go add to list. It's going to create all these block numbers. Now I could click this property right here. And let's say it doesn't have road access. I could remove it. So if I'm looking at something and I'm like, ah, this doesn't look like a good property. It doesn't have road access. Or it has an easement. Or let's say it's in a flood zone. Like here, 37. That's in a flood zone. So I'll like take this out. I'm not going to do that now because it's just going to take forever but you could sit there, have a VA do it, whatever you want to do, and go through that. So that's pretty much how I would pull this data. Now I'm going to go here, and I'm going to export to CSV. Boom. Now I have it. So I'm going to open with Excel. Okay, here is all the data right on here. You can see you have... Owner per, per first class, here's your APN, acreage size. So this is what I do. This this is one of the best things about this. Um, so if you have alt APN, you could have that there. I'll show you this in a second, building square foot. So anything of the building square foot? Oh, this did not pull all the data, hold on. It only pulled a few parcels. There we go. Let's do it again. There we go. Let's export CSV. Okay, sweet. Uh, no, I don't think you could auto remove it. 
as in like that, but it, you're not paying for per parcel. So it's not really that big of a deal if you pull extra data. So I'll show you that. So what I do here is I'm going to sort, I get rid of a couple of these things that fold. I actually got to edit my template. We want that. Alt APN doesn't have any Alt APN. So I'm going to get rid of that. Building square foot, go. County, zip, lot depth. All that stuff didn't pull. So I'll just get rid of this stuff. Now you could select way more fields if you want. I just pull the basic information you need to create a mailer. I'm going to just do, first I'm going to lock this baby. View. View. Try this again. Freeze top row. So what I do here is I'm not going to mail um, somebody owns 49 lots. Plus you can see Swanee Lake Plantation. John Hancock Life Insurance Company. Like these are probably owned like because this is a flood zone. You know, this is Florida North. Like all these, I'm not going to mail. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take, let's see, from here. I'm going to take anything that has an aggregated lot count. That means they own more than, you know, at least three lots or whatever the case may be. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to actually pull anything that's more than three and put that on a separate spreadsheet. And I'll mail that separately entirely with a different type of letter and all that stuff. So, because most likely the people that own these type of parcels are not going to sell to you. So copy this, paste that in a separate sheet. And then I'll take this out. And I'm just going to delete this data because it's on the other sheet. Boom, there you go. Okay, now... Duplicates, so let's go here, data, duplicates. My list has headers. I'm gonna select all, and I'm just gonna remove anything that has the same mailing address. There you go, 1,300 duplicates found, 1,400 unique remains. So there you go. I just sorted it out. Now I have a total of, boom, there you go, 1,491. While we're at it, let's just do it. Gersh County. Let's go here. Let's go sold data. Five, no max. One year, C105 homes. Sweet. We'll go down here. Download all. Cool. Okay. And then. Dropped it in this sheet too. There we go. Here's your sold data. So we'll call this acres. Call this PPA, price per acre. And then you're just going to do this. Divided by 43,560 equals this. Divided by this. Change these both to you. Currency. Cool. We got that. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit because I don't need all this information. Okay. So then we go here. Let's sort. Smallest, largest. Absolutely lovely. Delete this. So we'll insert a thing here. We'll call this averages. All right. So then all I'll do here is I just go through average and I take my averages of all these acreage sizes from five to like 10 or whatever you want to do five to 10, five to six, six to eight, however you really want to split it up. I'm just doing five to 10, 10 to 15. And then 15 to 20. And I'm just going to show you guys examples. I'm not going to go through and do this whole thing because I still want to pull data from Mark. So I'll go through here. I'll do my averages. And then I kind of look at any outliers here. Like, why did this sell for 30,000 an acre? Why did, you know, for the most part, like, why did this only sell for 2,000 an acre? Let's click it. Let's see why. Probably because it was a dump listing. And somebody just got a really cheap property. 
Oh, it's probably in a flood zone. So there you go. That is exactly why. So I'll go back over here and I'll just take this baby out. And you can see I'll delete this and my average will change. So my goal is to get this to do like a nice cascade where it goes like 15,000 and like 12,000 an acre. Then it goes down to, you know, keep going down. So I'll go through all these, all this data, everything like that. And I will, you know, why is this one selling for $89,000 an acre? I don't know. Let's see. Five one current home slot sold. Okay. Absolutely no clue. Wonderful. Runs. Okay. I'm going to say this is just public, public record. So this might have been something else that transferred. We don't know why. So I will just go ahead and remove that. And you'll see we were at like 15,000 before it went down 1,000 per acre. So just keep going through like that. And then that's how I would get my averages. And then once I do that, I will take my averages, overlay them with my data, right? So here's my data right here. Let me sort this by smallest largest. I will overlay my, add this, and I'll call this my PPA, my price per acre. I'll call this my market price. And then I insert this one and I'll call this one my, you know, 50% offer, whatever you want to do. I usually do a 40 to a 65% offer just so I have all the ranges in there. And then it just makes life easier. So that's it. Pretty simple. I'll save this and then I will uh, email that over to you. So what the heck county was this again? data sit on my desktop okay cool oops let me save it as file see that as stop save okay cool all right cool that's saved um so John, just send me a DM or something like that, and I'll send that over to you. Now, Mark, let's do one for you, Mark. Mark, where do you want to work? So this is like the August ones. If you want to take a look at any of these, we got, actually, let me zoom in a little bit. That helps. So we got Alabama, Florida. We just did this one. Fulton County, Georgia, um, Antrim, Jackson, Kakalaka, Lakatsak. I would say Michigan and Missouri I might avoid right now, but uh, Green County, Tennessee. Okay. Green County, Tennessee. Sweet. Let's do it. So let's check out Green County, Tennessee. Green County's the place to be. Okay, so it's in a good area. It's right outside Knoxville. This could be a mountainous area, I'm pretty sure. Off the check. Well, this area is going to be very mountainous. But this should be good. So looking at the sold data, I want to look at the five to tens. You got actually first I want to look at this. So we got 102, which means you have really good data. You have enough points to do your, get your price for acres. So you have 55 on market. That is actually pretty good. It's not too high, which is good. You want to see that. Oh, I'm sorry. You have 63 on market. Still fine. Quite a few pending. 14 pending. That's fantastic. Let us see. I got 11 acre, 64 acre, a 9 acre, a 20 acre, a 12 acre. So it's pretty all over the place what's selling in this area, what's actually going under contract. 
So let's beat on my own shirt. Okay. Wow, one point two million. This is probably his own commercial. So anything you ever see on like a highway or something like that, it's always going to sell for an exorbitant amount. So I would just take those right off your list. So the whole goal with pricing is not to get like exactly perfect. The goal is to get like 80% of the way there. Sometimes you're going to be a little off, a little high, a little low. But when you're offering 50% of market value to begin with, once you like start grading, like degrading that down, you're really not offering that much of a difference between their, you know, what you would offer if you were a slightly higher. So it's not the end of the world. The whole goal is if they're going to call and you're $5,000 off your price, they were going to call regardless. So don't really worry about being exact in your pricing. But finding a homogenous market does make life so much easier. Okay. So you have 128 homes, which is fantastic. That means you have tons of data. Let's check the five to tens. Let's see what we're working with. Now, the sell-through rate for this was 27% on the 10 to 20s, 27 on the one month, 55% on the three month, which is great to see. The six month, I love to see about 100%. That tells me that the market's turning over every six months. The more this is, the better. Like I'm loving anything like 150%, 160%. That shit's wild. I mailed Surrey, North Carolina, and I got one deal out of it. And I was like, damn such a hot county. I thought I would get a lot more deals. Um, only got one. Doesn't mean I won't get more, but I only got one. So five to tens. Let's check out homogenous. So you got a 130. And not good. It's got a structure on it, so that's why it's selling for a little more. Nine acres. You got six, about 10,000 an acre. About 10,000 an acre. Okay, so up here, it's selling for a little bit more. Okay. About 11,000 an acre. Eleven to 13 is median. Okay. Yeah, it looks kind of like that. I'd say 11 to 13 pretty much is a median. Pretty damn close. Um, not terrible. It's, it's not like homogenous, like you would say, like perfect, like that other county we just looked at, but it's pretty damn close. I'd say. Okay. Wow. Somebody got a steal <laughs> a 14 acre parcel with a house for $105,000. Crazy. Uh, 210 for 11. Okay. 174. It's like 17,000 an acre. Crazy. So it looks like the tens are actually trading higher than the fives for some reason. It doesn't look too bad pricing wise. I mean, I would take like pull this data. I would then take a look at it and like kind of just see. It might be beneficial to kind of pull pockets here, but I don't know. It's kind of trading decent. It's not too bad. 163 for 14. 112 for 11. Then you just got some crazy outliers. 16 acres, 447. All right. I still think it's a really good county. Let's check out Land Vision now. Let's go here, move all. I am going to remove list. Okay. Clear for the time. Okay, cool. So this was green county Tennessee. Search that baby up. Let's go baby. Now I'm working on getting really good at this. I, I am not good yet with this thing, but I'm figuring out little nuances on how to use land vision. So as I learn it, I'll definitely share it with you guys. Um, part of what I'm really looking at learning how to do is finding minimum road frontage. If I, if there's a filter for that, so I could say, Hey, I want to make sure any lot I pull has at least, you know, whatever that County's minimum is. If it's 50 foot, 
hey, I only want to pull lots that have a 50 foot minimum road frontage so that this way I know it, it's got road frontage. So I'm trying to find out how I could do that. Still haven't figured it out yet, but I will. So 4.9. Uh, we'll pull it 201s, pull it all. Yeah. It's no Mac. Why not? Give me the data. Ownership. I'm going to just do non owner occupied. That's it. So all that means is that they don't live on the property. It doesn't mean that they could live in the county, they could live in the state, they just don't live on the physical property. So you got some builder activity, which is good to see. Sometimes it's a bit finicky where if like you're zoomed out too far, it doesn't want to show you everything. So you might have to zoom my computer out a little bit. Just like that. There you go. Sweet deal. Okay, so I have, wow, 9,121. That's a lot of data. Okay, I'll turn that off. That is a lot of data. Holy crap. Oh, it looks like it's pulling property type. Character. It didn't pull. It didn't separate the smaller lots. That's why. Yeah, I know, John. I was wondering that too. Like, how do I find out if it says? But I think it's just the way it's listed. It's got. It's listed as vacant land. So, yes, yeah, right now. Characteristics is not showing me. Okay, there it goes. So what I did pull as I tr I tested it out with data tree and I pulled the same stuff in a different county. Created them. No, I don't. So aggregated. No, because what I do is I filter aggregated acreage later. So I don't bother doing it now. Once I get it a CSV for it, I filter out the aggregated acreage. Okay, so it's still showing me nine thousand. That's crazy. I wonder why that is. Couldn't use the vacant land for the use that. Yeah. Yeah, I think if it's vacant land, it won't have anything on it. I think that's kind of like the whole point of it. At least for for this um, company. So I think it's showing... Yeah, it's pulling everything. I don't know why it's pulling everything. I have that filter on. Let me try applying it again. Let me just put it... See, these are the little things that I don't, I haven't learned yet. Is it, it could be finicky with stuff. So, like, if I don't put a top end range, it might not pull the data. There you go. Now it's only twenty seven hundred. Once you put a top end filter, it stops it. Okay, cool. So let's pull this. Great. Okay, so delete this. 
da, 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 I'll delete that. You could usually like if you wanted to look at all like the building square foot and all that stuff. Sometimes it'll show up. A lot of times it doesn't because it's vacant land. So I have noticed. I haven't when I looked at stuff. I didn't notice a lot of um, a lot of what you call it buildings coming up. So I need a lot count. Let's do the same thing. So I'm going to just sort by this largest to smallest and HMS. Wow. So a lot of people own three parcels or more in this county. Like 2,000 people do. So it, depending on your mailing, like how, how much you want to mail, it might be all right to... Uh... It actually ended up pulling all 9,000 records. So, oh well. So, Mark, you're just going to get 9,000 records, and you do as much as you want with that. Okay. So, we got rid of. I got rid of all the one that has more than two parcels. Now, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to sort smallest, largest. I'm going to just take out anything that's below five acres. Put that on a separate. I'll just put anything below four acres. So this will go here. Just throw that there. Delete this. Pretty good. So there you go. So you got still. Twenty two hundred parcels in that area. Now you could just select. I would say, you know, I probably wouldn't mail anything above fifty in this area, just based on what's trading. But that's personal preference and also budget. Um, so let's go back to Redfin. Let's pull the data here. Let's go to solds. Let's do four to no max. Now, when you save these as CSVs, you guys know you have to separate these sheets. You can have multiple sheets. Just keep that in mind. Okay, vacant land, delete. Tennessee. So I'm going to change this to acres. Change this to price per acre. I'm going to do equals. This divided by 43,560. Acre is this divided by this. Because that. You can pull this comp sheet in Land Vision too. No, you can pull a comp sheet in Land Vision. We're just, I'm just, I just like pulling the Redfin stuff. Um, I know you can run comps through here. If you're in Land Vision, um, you could do last market sale and pull all the comps. So one year, whatever you want to do, and all the data. So you could select all that. It's up to you. It's personal preference. It just it all aggregates from the MLS anyways. Oops, wrong thing. Go back here. Okay. Sweet. Drag this baby all the way down. Cool. Sort. Uh, make sure whenever you sort anything. So this one has a house on it. So I'm just gonna delete that baby. Anything that has blank. If you have a blank space column, when you go to sort, it'll completely throw everything off. So make sure you don't have any blank spaces. Open that up. 
Let's go for delete. Cool. Location. Don't really need price per acre. We need that. So now I'm going to sort this. Smallest largest. Cool. There we go. Insert averages. Goals. Now you could go, it depends on how granular you want to get. If you want to like price the four to the sixes, in one range like that, and then go equals average. As long as you have enough data points, you do that six to tens. Another good thing to do is kind of look at land.com um, and check out some of their sold comps. I don't trust those as much all the time because they are self-reported. But it's also good to just get a genuine like overview of everything that's going on in the market. So I'll sometimes pull some extra comps from there if I don't have enough data. Or I'm just trying to hone in on a market. Ready? Cool. Okay. So you got 15, 14, 12. That's like a perfect cascade. So something's going on here. You got a 23. Beautiful 16 acres, limestone, uh, has features of barn and a pond. Your small stand of timber, come take a look. So that's why, because it's got a barn, it's got a good listing. This is how you want your listings to look. You got a barn, so a little bit of improvement. That's probably why that one sold for more. Take that baby off. Okay, let's check this guy. Just really nice ag land. It's got a pond. Beautiful piece. Four million dollar views. River frontage. There you go. Okay, you got a river frontage. You got water features. Any water features. I was gonna raise your value. So you could keep that on if you wanted, or you could take it off. I mean, you're pretty good so far. You got 12 to 11. Pretty good cascade. I'd maybe look at some of the highs, some of the lows, and just evaluate them and just kind of continue down. So you got any kind of outliers you want to remove and see why, like why is this 68 to 1500? Doesn't look like it has road access, something like that. Terrible listing. It's probably why it sold for crap. So why did this 85 acre just sell for that? Wow, nice gate. Ball in. Oh, but roads, potato track, development. Da, 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 da. This portion of the green 134 fires, survey lines, added to bottom of the um, Wow, this is a beautiful piece. wonder why it sold for so damn much. It's got a barn. It looks like it's being worked. Nice gate, barn. Something going on here. House, there you go. Take that off. So I'll go through this. I'll do exactly this, and I'll take my averages. Let's say it's like that. Properties. Go here. Scroll all the way up. Insert. I was going to do that. Okay. So we do price per acre, market price. 5%. Let's do, I'll do what I don't really do. I do 40%. reason why I do this is if it's a really hot area, I'm mailing at 55%. If it's a slow area, I'm mailing 
45 percent something like that and if it's like a range offer i already have it all prepped up so i could send a range if i wanted so i just while i'm pricing i just throw that in there cool I'll pick my price per acre. Go back over here. Which is sheet? Shit. Three, 15, five, six, seven. I'm just overlaying this. I would double, double check it, but I'm just throwing this in here just for show and tell. Paste that. Okay, don't paste that. Market price is this times this equals this times 0.4 equals this times 5 equals this times 0.5 this times 0.55 equals this times six equals this times okay so i'm going to drag you want to drag this one separate because if not if you try to drag these together it'll it'll go like this it'll start adding one each one, which by the time you get to the end, it's crazy. So I just drag everything down and then I go back and change my prices on the, on these. So you're going to want to change this to like what your, whatever you're pricing out for your, your, um, Certain acreage sizes, whatever. I just drag the whole thing just so I only have to do it once. I don't have to drag it one time. I don't have to drag it a bunch of times. I go back up here. I drag this baby. You can flash fill this stuff too. I know there's a hotkey for that. I'm not a X, uh, Excel wizard, but I know there is. A lot of data. Cool. All right. Now you price out your whole sheet. Now all you're going to do is come in here and then overlay your other pricing. So let's say this next one is this. So I'll take this, I'll drop this here. We'll go back to the sixes. Yeah, of course, man. Drop this baby here. Oh, I want to drop it here. Sorry. Okay. Way to screw the pooch there, man. So if you're copying stuff that has a formula, paste it up top, one formula will transfer. Um, so I would do this. I'd do some feathering. So I'd go like drag this up a little bit. Why are you doing that? Why are you, why are you messing with me, bro? Drag this up one. And then I'll change this pricing. Go up like 500 bucks. So like 14, 611 instead of 211. And I just like feather that in a little bit so that. It doesn't like it's not like a sharp drop when it goes from like 5.9 to six. It's like a huge jump. It's pretty smooth. So we did this with six to ten. So we'll just go six to ten now. Okay. Now this is what I do after I've priced all my data. I'll go here. I just like randomly just 
take a property. Doesn't matter. Okay, go here. I'll go to like ID land or I'll just use land vision because I can. Uh, let's take this out to move all clear the filter. Search for APN. Search. Okay, here's the here's that parcel that I just pulled. So what I like to do is I grab like a house that's right next door to it. I just need an address. I don't care that it's not the exact thing. My goal is to take this. I go to Redfin. Go here, pop this baby in. Okay, pulls up. Click this. Click this. Nearby homes for sale. I want to see solds. Last one year, land. And this was a 9.42 acre parcel. So I want to see the fives to the 20s. Okay, no results. Oh no, no results. Zoom out. All right, so general location is where we're like right here. So we're looking to see what comps are selling for in this area and see if we're on target for our pricing. So you got a 174. This looks like very beautiful mountainous land. This is, uh, so we're half this size. So imagine this is selling for one, what was it 120? And then you got a 6.74 acre for 60,000, 10,000 acres. So about 90,000. Now we are offering, we're saying a market value for this property is about 133. And we're offering probably around like 55%, so 73. So 140, 133, do we see 133s? I see a 238, half of that is 120. I see a 174 with beautiful mountainous views. Of course, it's going to sell for a touch more. So I'd say you're pretty damn close. You got a 123 right over here for 16 acre though. Yeah. So I just double check it. I'm like, okay, that looks pretty good. It's close, not like perfect. Close. Let's check one of these. Oh, we didn't do that yet. Oh, let's check a five. One of the little guys. Do the same thing. My vision. VPN. Paste. Search. Oops. Search. Great. Okay, grab that Addy. Greenville, Tennessee. Do, 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 do. And I want to see one year, and I want to see 10 acres max, three to tens. So one, so one just sold for 48,000 right around the corner from it. Let's see what else sold. 54, you got a subdivision over here. A bunch of them sold over there. But we're probably looking right here, so you got a 48. You got a 54. Let's go back to our sheet. We are offering, we're saying the market value is about 60. So I think we're right on target with the market value. So there you go. So it's actually pretty sweet. So I think this pricing is pretty damn spot on. We're saying it's estimated market price is about 60. And I am seeing 58, a 54. I'm um, seeing a 48. So I'm thinking we're pretty close. Pretty close. Maybe you could even adjust it a little bit, but it's pretty close. So that is it. Um, so how am I deciding my... So I offer percentages based on the how fast that market's moving. Like if there's a lot of activity going on there, I'm going to offer a higher percentage. And the goal for that is I want to just get them in my CRM. So 
I offer 55%, get them in my CRM, and usually I'll negotiate them down like 5%. Or if it's just a stellar deal, I just lock it up and move on with my life. 5% is not going to kill me. Um, and if it's a deal, it's going to be a deal no matter what. Green County, Tennessee, all data. Okay. Uh, Mark and who else was it? Mark and John, shoot me a DM or email or whatever you want to do. I'll actually just drop my email here. And uh, say, shoot me an email and I will send you both these things. Oh, okay. There you go. Cool. Yeah, do your q and I'll see you guys later. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. A bunch of people are going to hop off. We're doing the Leah Q&A. So I will hop off too, and I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.